Yeah, g'day, and welcome back to my lathe channel. One thing that's kind of bugged me about using this machine ever since I did the conversion is that I didn't put any home switches on this, so it doesn't know where it is in either X or Z. So let's do something about that. Now when you first turn on the machine, it has no real idea of where the cross slide's parked and where the saddle is, so you need some way of homing it. Now a simple if brutal way of doing it would be to simply run each axis onto a hard stop. These being low powered stepper motors, it can run onto a hard stop and stall without causing any damage. Because now you're in a known position, call that a, the home position for X and put in a number. Do the same for Z. Now it's in a known position. In some ways, that's a very good way of doing it. Physical hard stops like that are, well, by definition, very accurate positions. But I'm a little concerned with those vibrations loosening pulley grub screws. Mail time. These are the inserts which you will put into 3D printed parts. Just push them in with a soldering iron, get them nice and hot, and they'll melt into the part. Long time reviewers might remember I damaged the touchscreen connector for my mini lathe. And I've been meaning to replace it. It was this ribbon cable. Oh, it looks like they've actually reinforced it a bit on this model. The old one still works fine. Doesn't have any touch display anymore. So let's switch it out. No cable. Works fine on the other one. All right, what about with the Shelblins controller? Does it work there? Okay, so the screen obviously works, but for some reason it doesn't like the signal or the cable coming out of my mini lathe. Let's try switching cables. All right, I know it works, and I know it works with this white cable. Reboot it. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, that's not it. The next thought I had was just switching over the interface controllers, but unfortunately this one has got dual inline pin to connector thing, whereas this one's got one of those modern ribbon, ribbon cables that comes up on the inside, comes up on the back of the board, so the connectors aren't the same. I'm using a very old version of uh, Linux Mint. It's no longer supported. Maybe if I upgrade the operating system, the problem will magically go away. Keep your fingers crossed for me, huh? Well, well I think about my course of action here. Let's get on with the home switches. I bought a three pack of inductive sensors. First, they only delivered one. So I sent that order back. So I ordered three more. Again, they delivered only one, but I complained. And then they sent me the other ones. Okay, let's just check to make sure the sensor's actually working. Alright, I thought so. I left enough wire in this cable so I can connect up home switches without having to run new cables through. Oops, with that marking out, I missed that there's a feature in here where the screw's going into, so I need to move the whole thing over a bit. Nah, it should be okay. I'm not going to get full coverage over that sensor, so just see if it does trigger. 
Oh, that's good. Looks like I spoke too soon. Now I've pulled up the HAL file here and I'm just looking at the different GPI opens. I think I'm on pins 7 and 8 for these sensors. So if I move away, it goes off. Move together, it goes on. But I'm not getting a state change. The sensor works, but Linux CNC can't detect it. The PROC sensors I'm using are NPN type. And I just looked up and they need a common positive. Now this Mesa 7i96 card has got a, has got a single common pin. I've got that on common ground and I've got it wired like that because it's reading out this encoder. However, these encoders do have differential signals. At the moment I've got common ground and to read A and B. I wonder if I can switch to common VCC and read negative A negative B. So 5 volts in, there's my ground, my signal. The multimeter is simulating the Mesa card. So at the moment I'm connecting to negative. This is actually a supposedly a graphing oscilloscopy kind of thing. So let's see if we can see that square wave. Yeah. So what happens if we now switch that over to the to positive instead of negative? I'm going to say it's not going to make the slightest bit of difference. I'm pretty sure that the encoder mode of the Mesa card just works on flank transitions. So I'm guessing this is not going to make a difference. Let's wire it up and find out. Mail time. In one of my last videos where I was doing a bit of troubleshooting, I had some issues that my oscilloscope was crap. Alexander in Germany was kind enough to send me like a plug-in oscilloscope, I think. where you use your computer as a display for it. And this is the modern big brother of this. Cool. So that's what I get referencing off negative. Let's reference it off positive now. I think this is like, I think this is what they call a TTL. Shouldn't make any difference. Yeah. Now the question is, do I want to rewire my entire electrical cabinet? Or is it easy just to order some PNP uh, sensors? So this is my encoder. So it still needs to be powered and grounded correctly. But uh, this, this line here, this is my common on the Mesa card. So that needs to be switched over onto the 5 volt. The only other I.O. I've got going into that board are physical switches. So they're not going to matter. They've got no polarity. Right, so I've rewired that. Right, let's see if we can home this thing. All right. Now for the Z-axis, I'm going to need some sort of a bracket to mount this roughly here and pick up this bearing block as a target. Something like this. Okay, with crimps on the wires, that can all now go back together. Just take those temporary screws out. I 
guess junction boxes are never big enough, are they? Okay, after a bit of rewiring, let's see if this actually works. So let's home X. Okay, and then we'll home Z. Okay, that doesn't work. Knock that block out of the way. So I think the problem is that aluminium block. The sensor probably needs some steel target, so let's make one. Right, did a quick layout, let's go and chop that out. bolts on there. All right, let's see if we can home this thing. All right. Now if I can just get this monitor working, if an update to the OS doesn't work, another thing I can try is getting an ATP version of these EDID modules, which forces the HDMI into a specific resolution and frequency. That might also be a way of solving it. I really would like to have this monitor sorted soon because it's kind of the last task and then I can consider the whole lathe finished and sell it. Because while this mini lathe's been a fun project, now the Schaublin can do anything it can do better. So I think it's time to sell it. Thanks for watching.